I would like to just say uh, welcome, and I'd like to just get right into our discussion. I want to kind of talk about tonight, I'd like to kind of get this started by asking a simple question, and that is, why do young men appear to be drawn uh, to other religions, religious movements like the Hebrew Israelites, um, and, and so on and so forth? What can be done uh, in your estimation or in your opinions that can draw young men, African American men in particular, to Christ? Um, El Man, can you ask answer that question, and then anyone else that want to chime in, you can you can come right on in, and we'll just go right along you know, on and on. El Man, would you give some uh, understanding to perhaps what your understanding that you're doing? As relates to, relating to why are so many young men, African American men particularly, being drawn to other religions like uh, sure. Israelites, like the Nation of Islam? So talk about it. Sure. God bless you. Thank you all so much, Bishop Hankerson, uh, Bishop Bell. Thank you so much for this opportunity and to all these other great men of God um, that we share this this time with. Um, that is an amazing question, and you know I believe. Um, as we, we look to move forward in the church, I think that's the very thing that is hindering us because the church itself comes off as a stagnant entity. Um, and so I believe that, that the church must get back to being a movement. Um, I just don't believe that nowadays that people want to join a church in the typical fashion that is, uh, you know, in the, in the older way, but they want to get involved with the movement. It's not just the Hebrew Israelite movement. It's all these movements, the, the Me Too movement, the LGBT movement, all of these things are getting, gathering people is because it is a movement and the church itself it comes off as a stagnant entity. Um, and so we have to be wow. a, a, a part of something and present a movement that is impacting families, impacting lives, impacting uh, uh, things that are affecting our community, affecting um, our generation, and then introducing um, the love of Christ through the movement. It's in teaching doctrine. Uh, the Hebrew Israelites, although they are wrong, uh, unfortunately, many of us cannot counter what they're teaching, number one, because we don't understand it. We haven't. Uh, studied it. Uh, unfortunately, many of us cannot counter what they're teaching, number one, because we don't understand it. We haven't uh, studied it, number one, because we don't understand it. We haven't. Uh, I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the apostles and elders agreed. Millstone, Shalom to you, other fellow followers of the truth, you few sisters, and mainly Shalom to the elect. Anyway, I want to go in this video, uh, the water to the brother, uh, Judah 1969, who sends me these videos from time to time. Um, this video also, the water to the brother for uploading this video. Um, the true doctrine of Yahweh have the so-called pastor shook. Uh, I don't know who the brother is, but um, this channel is endure these last days. So I don't know if this video been going around or this brother just uploaded it. So I saw it and I said, well, I'll do a video on it, right? So now um, to go into it, uh, I kind of go into videos like this. To go into it, this man says, uh, he asks is how to bring the youth back to Christ. Well, first of all, the youth was uh, born or let me say forced into plantation Christianity, right? They were forced into this. Why? Because we didn't know any better. Just like we was forced into the um, public school system. Just like we was forced to pledge an allegiance to a, a flag or a country. Same deal. But people do grow up and some people stay asleep and some people wake up. And there's different levels of consciousness. You know, you got some people wake up a fact of Christianity, but then they go into Africanism, right? Or or Pan-Africanism, whatever it is. Or they go into um, Buddhism or whatever else. They But they get the hell out of the Christian church. There's a lot of women waking up out of the Christian church, but they're joining witchcraft. So what we see um, with these guys, and again, you have to say things carefully on the tube, so that's how I'm going to keep it clean. You can see these guys 
are trying to find a way they group to get group themselves together on a panel in their sharp suits and their um their smooth attire and their charismatic behavior right trying to figure out uh how to get the youth the so-called young black youth into the christian church and these guys that are all set up we all know who they are and well as far as the organizations they deal with and how these organizations were set up right so the smooth speaking charismatic pastor days are over you done fooled the uh people at least the people feel like they've been fooled long enough you've brought nothing to the uh the table when it comes to so-called religion right you brought nothing to the table when it goes to, to, to this religion to the religion they believe in now he also goes um uh, quite a few things he said he also says this is a movement the church needs a movement well i'll get some scriptures on that to prove that there's no movement this is not a movement this is nothing you can do this is the work of the heavenly father and the heavenly father put them in uh a quagmire as they like to say because these same people they the most high will use set up scriptures for you to read to make you think you're justifying your behavior for instance <clears throat> we'll tell them there's nothing you can do the most high set it up but then they'll stretch out and say well we got to try to reach the youth that's what paul did or try to reach the people the blind well the problem with that okay these are when you're trying to reach the uh new people that's coming in then you got to try to reach them but since all the people who left christianity nobody wants to go there so they need a new hook they need a new kind of faith or belief to try to bring people back and when you're doing things like that you have become very desperate in your trials on trying to get people back into the Christian church and it doesn't look like it's working. So let's go to 1 Corinthians um 3 and um let me go to 7. Let me go to 6. Um let me go to 5. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom ye believe? even as the Lord gave to every man with a question mark, right? I have planted, Apollos have watered, but God, Yahweh, gave the increase. So neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but Yahweh that give the increase. So clearly you can see these pastors are faithless. They don't have faith. They never really did. They didn't understand faith, and they don't have belief in the Heavenly Father. This is why all we do as Hebrew Israelites, and I'm saying starting with Great Millstone because this is who I follow, all we do is we go out and teach. We put up videos in the hopes that to wake up the elect. That's what we follow, getting to the elect. We're not trying to wake up all Israelites, but if they wake up, they wake up, but mainly we reach out for the elect. So the main thing is, and in and, and our, and our so-called genre, is to wake up the elect Israelites. To the truth right we're not out there doing no gimmicks now you got some israelite groups they 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 go out there and they march and they give look flashy and whatever else it is and to try to get people to come in you don't need that because the most high is the one that's going to give the increase and no matter how you look at it man's going john uh what is it jeremiah 10 23 something like that man's goings of the lord right so there's nothing you can do about what's happening you got you got to give that up you know christianity was forced upon us right so anyway this guy says that they just can't understand our doctrine so we don't know how to take it well they didn't get lessons for vocab alone that which proves that vocab alone is losing because he's got a ton of videos out there on how to deal with hebrew israelites the problem is we are sharp in the scriptures and there's nothing they can do because it always go back to the, the Jew and the Gentile, the Jew and the Greek, which um, when you look at the word Gentile, that was a placement word that wasn't even originally in the scriptures. It was either um, Greek or, or heathen. 
And then you have the word Grecian, which means Greek speaking Jews. So it wasn't never really about the land mass. It was about the Israelites because as Deuteronomy 28, 64 says, the Israelites were scattered and now across all the globe from one end of the earth, even into the other. Right. So this is why they can't understand our doctrine. Right. Let's go to Isaiah 14. Uh, then 27. This is going to um, Yahweh God. It, this this is titled Yahweh against the Assyrians, right? But this is going to this society now. Jeremiah twenty-eight and eight, the prophesy prophet pro, prophets prophesy against against great kingdoms, right? So Jeremiah uh, Isaiah fourteen and twenty-six. Um, yeah, this is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations, right? Right? For the Lord of hosts have purposed, and who shall disannul it, right? So this is going to Babylon. This is going to what you see today. Again, I'm just going to keep it like that. And it says, and the hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back, right? Who shall turn it back? There's nothing you can do. He went on to talk about there's a famine of the word. Where did he get that from? These pastors was never um, going into that, you know? Where where did we learn any of that at? Okay. Let's go to here um, in Acts 5, Gamaliel's council, right? Um, we can read the whole chapter, but I'm just getting to the point. Um. 39, but if it be of Yahweh, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against Yahweh. Bashim Yahweh Shah. See, what you guys, what you pastors are doing, you're fighting against the Heavenly Father and His Son, right? And the prophets, you know, starting with Yahweh all the way on down. You're fighting against the men of the Lord, the Most High and the men of the Lord, mainly Yahweh. At least you think you could fight against them because you're controlled by the Most High too. So there's nothing you could do. No matter what you try, nothing you can do. Um, the, the word is going to go out. You can try to get gimmicks. You can put up a circus. You can bring back Michael Jackson and have him do moonwalks. You can get break dancers, right? You can get R&B singers. You can get those rappers with their pants hanging down with a couple of good beats. We've seen you do all this stuff in these churches. You got these dance dance off contests with uh, lewd and rude acts going on in the churches. What you going to do? There's nothing you can do about it. Second Peter two and one, it says, "But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teacher among you who privily or privately shall bring indomitable, abomin abominable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them." And, uh, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So these guys all believe in God, a God. They believe so-called in the, what they call the Most High, what we, we know them to be the Most High. And they, they follow, they, well, they don't follow, but they believe, so they say. But they're not doing anything the Most High say to do. Why? Because you can't worship God and mammon, Yahweh and mammon. Mammon represents the riches. Right? These are hirelings. This is why Matthew, the seventh chapter, says, Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep, sheep's clothing, you know, with the phalluses around their necks. I mean, come on now. This is not men of God. The distinguished guy with the shaven, they're all trying to grow beards now for whatever reason. See, they're, they're, they're trying to take a piece of what we have and make their own. If you notice, all these Christians now have somehow joined the, the, the bandwagon, let me say that, joined the wave of growing beards. <laughs> now they got beards. It ain't going to stop it, man. That's all I have on that. Shalom.